Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a cosmic conversation, our second uh, in this series. Tonight, we'll be talking all about eclipses. So it looks like we have a few people on right now. Um, let us know where you're from and if you've ever seen a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse. We'd love to hear your experiences. And as we talk about our own uh, and what 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 our solar what eclipses are and and where we can maybe see them again soon. Uh, so I'm Tiffany Bulbrick with the with the planetarium. I'm the planetarium lecturer and also with the planetarium is Kurt Spivey, our engineer. Hey. So yes, this is a much more uh, casual than our Saturday night. What uh, keep looking up shows. We want your input. Uh, if we didn't have to worry about people hijacking the Zoom, we'd have you come on live with us. But please tell us your eclipse stories in the comments, and if you have any pictures, uh, we'll share them too. So uh, we want to hear your eclipse stories as well. Yes. Yeah, so first, uh, yeah, we're all coming from different places and different uh, backgrounds and, and knowledge. So some of us probably, uh, some of us may know what an eclipse is, um, but we're going to start from the beginning and just kind of do a quick overview of what that actually means and where you can see them. So Kurt, do you want to start with that? Yes. However, I am not going to play the Bonnie Tyler song. I refuse to play the Bonnie Tyler song. Just so you know, I yeah, hate that song. In my generation, I guess. <laughs> I don't get what you're saying at all. <laughs> oh, total eclipse of the heart. You've heard that. Oh, song. yeah, yeah. Oh. Anyway, all right. So to start off, we're going to talk about what eclipses are. There are two that we get here on Earth because we have one Moon, one Earth, one Sun, and what happens? Uh, one interesting uh, little tidbit that happens. Uh, on earth is the sun is 93 million miles away the moon is a quarter of a million miles away and even though the moon is way smaller than the earth and way way smaller than the sun because of their relative distances their apparent size in the sky is almost exactly the same which is interesting now sometimes we don't get eclipses every single month for two reasons one the moon's orbit is slightly tilted compared to uh, the Earth's orbit around the sun. So sometimes the moon passes above the sun, sometimes the moon passes below the sun, and sometimes it goes in the shadow, sometimes it doesn't. And um, the moon's orbit isn't exactly round. It's a little bit egg-shaped. So sometimes it's closer to the Earth uh, and sometimes it's further away. When we get an eclipse and the moon is further away, it doesn't completely cover the sun. That's called an annular eclipse. Uh, we saw so that little, in our video. That if you saw any bits of our intro video, we have Kurt put a nice little gif on there of the moon passing in front of the sun, but the moon was a little bit smaller than the sun, so it made that ring for mm -hmm. an annual. And that's eclipse. called an annual eclipse. We had one of those here in 1994. Uh, it happened around noon, and I remember that specifically because it was like a thunderstorm was moving in. It was that dark, but. Uh, it was still daylight and, you know, the sky was blue. It was weird. Mm -hmm. I remember that one specifically. But uh, let's take a look at our graphic here. Uh, the top one is a solar eclipse. The sun's over here. The moon passes between the sun and the earth. And when that happens, you get two distinct shadows. They are called the umbra and the penumbra. And this all has to do with optics. You don't have to understand that other than you get a really dark shadow where the sun's completely blocked and you get a lighter shadow where the sun is not completely blocked in the penumbra as it goes around. I do want you to notice how small the total eclipse area is. You get a partial eclipse in the penumbra too. I shouldn't mention that. Uh, but notice how small of an area is covered by the umbra and that's all the more that gets covered by a solar eclipse. On the flip side, the bottom picture you're looking at is how we get a lunar eclipse. Eclipses are named for what is being blocked. So when the sun is blocked, it's a solar eclipse. When the moon is blocked, it's a lunar eclipse. That's the difference. But what happens there is the moon passes completely into the Earth's shadow, or we, you can get a partial lunar eclipse as well, where it just skims the shadow. 
Uh, and when that happens, notice half of the planet gets to see a lunar eclipse when it happens, but only a small area gets to see a solar eclipse. Yeah, when so it just happens. to be clear, you have to be standing for this top picture, you have to be standing in that black circle. The little one right the total there. Total solar eclipse. If you're in the bigger gray area, that would be like in 2017 here in Youngstown, we saw that partial eclipse. So the, the moon partially covered the sun, but not completely. So it's, yeah, it's a very small swath of earth. And oftentimes that lands in an ocean. The earth is made of mostly water. So it's, it's rare for it to even, it's somewhat rare for it to even hit a land. So it, mm -hmm. it's a roll of the dice. One last point though, any single time you get a, a lunar eclipse, you're going to have a solar eclipse two weeks before or two weeks after. They always happen in pairs. Yeah. Uh, I'll get to more of that a little bit later in the show. But to recap. So if the earth is, in the, is between the moon and the sun, we call that a lunar eclipse. If the moon is between the earth and the sun, then that's a solar eclipse. And if the sun is between the earth and the moon, then we have an apocalypse. We're not talking about those though. That's some other uh, uh, study that we don't do Two in the planetary. Two billion years from now or yeah. something, <laughs> it'll be fine. We're yeah, fine. exactly. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, what we're going to talk about first is the one that uh, most of us experienced in 2017. I know that seems like an eon ago after what we've gone through the last couple of years, uh, but it, this was uh, on August 21st, 2017. This was called the Great American Eclipse because you can see that we call this the path of totality. Uh, that little yellow line you see going all the way across the country is where the total eclipse was seen, where the uh, sun went completely dark. It started in Oregon, crossed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think it was nine total states, and then left over South Carolina. Uh, and anywhere along that path, uh, you got to see the sun blocked. It was visible for more of the country than just about any other eclipse we've ever had. If you look at the chart here, we have 90% eclipse, 80% eclipse, 70% eclipse. Where we are up in Youngstown, we were at about 85%, the 80% line. I thought we were like 79, 78. Yeah. Yeah. If you look, the 80% line yeah. almost hits Youngstown here. And that's where we were with our eclipse. Now, uh, we were lucky in August of that year because we had a perfectly clear day. I will say, though, uh, I don't know if you remember the hype building up to this. We were oh smart. Uh, we uh, ordered a bunch of eclipse shades a few months ahead. Unfortunately, the word got out that we had ordered eclipse shades. And I spent <laughs> the two weeks prior to this answering about six or eight phone calls a day. Do you have any eclipse shades we can have? The other thing we got was we had this little stamp with our logo and uh, my poor students, the two of them at the time, had to sit there and stamp our logo on yeah. all of our Eclipse shades. I remember because <laughs> Kurt, Kurt answers the info line for the planetarium. So he filled at all of those calls and there were so many media appear appearances that every one of, every one of our, our staff, like we have a small staff of, you know, two, two and a half people, like two full-time, one, one part-time person. And we were all booked on media appearances, especially that week of. Oh, good uh, grief, yes. Yeah. And um, I remember giving out solar eclipse glasses a couple months before we were showing a, an eclipse show in the planetarium. And so for every, you know, every time we offered that show, we gave a free pair of eclipse glasses. And I remember seeing them, you know, being littered on the floor, people just dropping them, not one, you know, not caring because it was, you know, May and this wasn't happening until August. And uh, by August, people were paying, you know, 70 bucks for a pair of these cardboard eclipse glasses so that you could view the eclipse safely. Yeah. And even there, there were some shysters that were making cheap knockoffs that could have been dangerous. And we so had we to warn people of off of those, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, but we were doing lots of media appearances leading up to this. We, we have a couple of comments of reflecting on the 2017 eclipse. Um, okay. 
Christy is from Boardman. She said, we got the glasses in order to watch the eclipse. It was so cool. I agree, it was really cool. Even the partial here in Youngstown. Mm -hmm. um, James is, lives in Liberty Township and went to Kentucky for the solar eclipse. Ah, I know a lot of people that did that actually. Yeah. Um, it was high noon and there was twilight for 360 degrees. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and he's also seen a few lunar eclipses as well. Awesome. Well, yeah. um, actually, we uh, were kind of on our own for this too because most of the members of the local astronomy club, the Mahoning Valley Astronomical Society, did exactly what James did and went to Kentucky or other places yeah. so they could be under the totality uh, rather than up by us. Now, we also knew that there would be no way that we could have a large number of people on campus. They're just, we were so close to downtown, we do not have parking for a large number of people. So uh, we talked with the folks at the uh, Canfield Experimental Farm at the fairgrounds, and they had uh, this big parking lot and big field, and they allowed us to set up down there uh, for that eclipse. I also remember that very much because the day of the eclipse, I had to get up and do the morning news for channel 27 and channel 33. So not only did I have to be there for the whole eclipse, I had to get there at about 530 in the morning a uh, to do a, a spot. Oh, boy, that was an exhausting day. But getting to the day itself, uh, here on the uh, right, that was what the sun looked like uh, in one of our telescopes at the maximum amount of eclipse. As Tiffany said, we had about 79% coverage, almost 80% coverage. Um, in the middle there, you see our intrepid uh, planetarium lecturer with her solar shades that we had to fight tooth and nail so we'd have our own pairs. <laughs> and she's holding a, a, an activity we did with people uh, because we knew we wouldn't have enough solar uh, shades. An easy way to watch a solar eclipse, and you can talk about uh, viewing a solar eclipse here in a moment, Tiffany. Uh, but we made pinhole projectors, which is we took two sturdy plates. Those are chinette plates. Once again, we used our handy dandy uh, Ward Beecher Planetarium stamp on them. And then you <laughs> poke a hole in one and you hold them at a distance and you could actually watch the eclipse through the pinhole projecting onto another plate. Well, last but not least on the left, uh, is our former student, Nick DeLuca, who despite it being about 85 degrees was wearing two shirts that day. And next to him on his first day on the job and on his birthday was our recent graduate, Howard Hale. Yeah, oh, baby Howard. <laughs> yes, that and- very first yeah, day. This, and this was, was his first day. It was a crazy day. So. Yeah. Way to just throw him in the deep end. Yeah, welcome to. They are using our uh, one of our scopes that we had set up. We had four set up. Uh, that is the hydrogen alpha scope uh, that has special filters in it uh, to, it can do nothing but look at the sun, but it blocks out all wavelengths except for one. And uh, that wavelength makes the sun look red, but you can see prominences and uh, sunspots and stuff. I think the yeah. sun was pretty quiet that day, wasn't it? Tiffany? Yeah, it was towards the minimum. Um, but that so that scope is built to study the sun carefully. So, uh, but we had several other telescopes that are used normally at night, but you can outfit them with solar filters that are more robust, but similar in concept to the glasses that you wear. Uh, it blocks out most of the light from the sun so that you can view it safely. P.S. Don't do what President Trump did that day and try to look at the sun without so, uh, solar uh, special protection on your eyes. So uh, that photo that, that's there, Kurt, I think that that's uh, through one of the telescopes with the solar filter on it, right? Yes, it is. I believe that might have been through one I'm about to show you, as a matter of fact. I think we took that. So that's what, that's what you would see through a telescope outfitted with a solar filter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and I'll go to the next one. Uh, this is our other student at the time, Ashley Lamaster, and she is using our eight inch uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope uh, to show people uh, the uh, solar eclipse. And you can't see the end of that. You'll see better in a moment. Next to her is uh, Eleni, who is now one of our student employees, but this was 
Uh, she was a freshman at the time, and she was in uh, high school, not, I think. Or no, was she still in high school then, or was she was it? entering? Yeah, that's right. She was in. She's not yet at YSU, but she was about to start YSU. She was that. just about to start. So, as a matter of fact, there was a, a STEM event going on campus to welcome these students too. Yeah, they did not consult supposed... us, <laughs> and they yeah. they put a huge. Uh, it's the ignite event. It's uh, happens every August to you know, get the freshmen on campus and, and to get them excited about starting school. Uh, and and it brings thousands of people on campus for completely non-astronomical purposes. <laughs> so yes. that's an extra busy day for, for YSU. Yes, and uh, Eleni was supposed to be at that, but she's like, no, I have enough to get me excited without Ignite. So she actually brought her own telescope and set it up for solar observing. And boy, were we glad she was there. Uh, last but not least, here I am uh, with our Dobsonian 8-inch telescope. Uh, we bought this telescope specifically for this event, but we use this one more than any other scope in there now because it's really easy to set up and take out. And there you can see the filter on the end. It looks like we put a big mirror on the end. Unlike the hydrogen alpha scope, which lets in one wavelength of light, this just knocks down all the light coming from the sun. So it still appears yellow, uh, but uh, this one's a manual scope. So I was constantly between every single person that was looking through the scope, I was having to move the scope to keep it on the sun as it tracked across the sky. You don't realize realize how fast the sun tracks across the sky until you're trying to keep it in a telescope that doesn't have a motor on it and by the way you want to talk about this being one of your favorite pictures Tiffany yes I just love that kid's expression because I think it captures the excitement of that moment so perfectly we were all feeling that way uh, yes so and we, we had a what three ish thousand people come to to Canfield Experimental Farms uh, for this. And uh, you would you would know better than I. I was stuck at this telescope for about four hours. I did not move. Tiffany yeah. at least got to rove a little bit. Yeah. I, I did not move from this telescope except to get some water and get a little shade. We started with five or 6,000 of those solar eclipse glasses, you know, a year before the event, because we, we were one of the three people in Youngstown thinking about this a year in advance, right? Yes, <laughs> and so we're glad we did because the people that waited, boy, were they upset. Yeah, and so the day of, we only saved maybe a thousand or so to give away, and we knew that we were going to have more people than that, so um, I was kind of in charge of uh, helping to, um, develop these indirect methods, right, like uh, the, the pinhole projectors, but people were coming with cereal box projectors, and everyone was sharing, taking turns sharing their glasses, uh, mm -hmm. lining up at the telescopes, it was... Um, a beautiful community event and it was a lot of excitement Absolutely. and it wasn't even a total eclipse like that's the thing is it wasn't it didn't even day didn't turn to dark necessarily it just it was just yeah so. uh being the loudest mouth out there too i got to yell out okay so uh the total the maximum coverage is in 10 minutes and five minutes okay everybody look through your glasses now this is as much as going to be covered and i was yelling and that up and down the line like when when it was maximum coverage, everyone in the in the yard in the field just cheered together. It was really yep. cool. It yep, was yep. so much fun. And uh, I think that's I I'm safe to say that's the biggest event at least since the two of us have been with the planetarium that we've ever put on. I don't know if they've ever had star parties yeah, bigger. No, our, than rock the, our rock the domes have gotten up there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've had 3,000 at Rock the Dome. I, I I would feel that, I'm sure. But yes, Rock the Dome does get a good crowd out, but you can only do those 146 at a time. So speaking of which, those will be coming back. So just so yeah, you know. Yeah, one of these days <laughs> we will. We will be back. Anyway. All right, let's move on because this was a partial eclipse. Oh, I forgot. We mentioned the Ignite event on campus. Uh, because we were all down at the Canfield Fairgrounds, here is our illustrious potentate and uh, department chair, Greg, Dr. Greg Sturris, uh, holding a very few solar eclipse shades. What he had to do with these was pass them around to people as we were uh, looking. And, and there he is showing President Tressel the eclipse uh, during the Ignite Fest there. On the right, you see uh, the uh, pinhole projector I was talking about with Tiffany and our handy dandy Ward Beecher Planetarium stamp that we put on everything. Because uh, one thing I learned in one of my previous jobs at a museum is logo placement. You'll notice I am wearing a logo right now, as a matter of fact, too. 
I know about logo placement. Uh, but uh, we were mentioning you can't look at the sun directly. So uh, here was another way you could look at it too. This is a uh, simple, uh, actually it's a, uh, uh, a chemical uh, flask holder from our uh, labs and we rigged a, uh, um, Greg engineered uh, by, by a binocular holder stand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, we put that up there, but instead of looking through the ends of the binocular, we had them look at the piece of paper and there you can see the eclipse. So I guess it kind of worked out in the end because Ignite, um, it, we, we sort of set up a little table outside of the planetarium where people walking by could, could interact and we're like, hey, you know, there's a solar eclipse going on here. Take a look. And uh, so they got several hundreds of people uh, just visiting a little table. And uh, I should point out those little wood thing, the little wood Ohio next to the binoculars there. Big shout out to our good friend, Jay Waraki, uh, who uh, works with our additive manufacturing uh, folks on campus. Uh, we haven't seen much of them recently because they're building a new additive manufacturing lab down by the police station. Uh, but uh, completely uh, on his own, Jay found these. They had these for every state in the union. You could uh, have this. And he used his laser cutter on campus and made us a bunch of these. And if you look at the P in Eclipse, there's a hole out. This was a pinhole projector you can project the uh, clips on to as well. And I still have mine on the wall here. Uh, we have one in the planetarium still. Uh, they, they were like our souvenirs of the day. So that was 2017. Let's move on to Tiffany because she's one up to that. <laughs> well, as um, and, and they, you know, 2017 was still amazing just because it it was a really cool community event where we were really brought together um, and it sort of personified what, what I love about astronomy, that it's this great unifier. But uh, I did see a total, total solar eclipse. I have seen a total solar eclipse since then. There has not been one in Youngstown, obviously, but uh, July 2nd of 2019, there was a total solar eclipse in Chile. Uh, and I, I've been doing some work there. You guys have maybe heard of the Big Astronomy Project. We talk about that um, here on our social media and the planetarium. Show uh -huh. coming soon to the Ward Beecher Planetarium too. Yes, it'll be our signature show when we return. And uh, we, we were a partner in, the, in that project and its development. And so that uh, project brought me down to Chile and um, we sort of timed it with this uh, solar eclipse. And uh, it ha just so happened that the total solar eclipse fell over many of the world's greatest observatories. It was totally just sort of happenstance. It was a really wonderful coincidence. So I was only one, one of only maybe 100, 200 people who were, was allowed to be up on the mountain. So I'm way, this in this photo, I'm way high up uh, on top of a mountain at Cerro Tololo Inter-American Observatory, CTIO. That's uh, one of the uh, world, like a world-class obser uh, optical observing uh, telescope inside that huge building there. There's a twin of this building here in the US, uh, Kitt Peak, but um, uh, you can see me with the glasses, I'm looking up, uh, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Uh, if you want to flip through and show, there were some really great photographers, very talented photographers up on the mountain with me. Uh, so this is what we saw. Uh, this is several photos stacked on top of one another uh, by Peter here. And you can so you can see what the solar eclipse looked like as it was reaching totality. So it had that crescent shape like we saw here in Youngstown. And then um, these, there's like, uh, what, seven, six or seven frames here where it's during totality. Um, and we actually had this effect that you could um, call the diamond ring. Sometimes you can see something called Bailey's beads, but these are little shining lights um, that are actually imperfections in the surface of the moon. So like lunar craters, don't completely cover the sun. So just a tiny, that's, that's how close the, you know, the sun and the moon, when they cut, when the moon covers the sun up, that's how tight that is. If it was just a little bit smaller, we wouldn't have that eclipse. Um, 
it was just the most incredible thing I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, truly, if you ever get a chance to experience a total solar eclipse, uh, as James was saying, it was amazing. Um, being up on the mountain, I was really, really high up, so I could see horizon 360 degrees. Uh, and so as James mentioned, uh, I also saw twilight for 360 degrees all around me. So not only when the moon covered the sun, day literally turned to dark in a matter of seconds. It was moments. It stayed dark for about two minutes, and then it got light. Um, it, it got noticeably colder. It probably dropped, gosh, it had been like 20 degrees or something. May, maybe not. Maybe I'm exaggerating. But it noticeably got colder. The wind picked up, and there was sunset all around, 360 degrees. This is why I like this photo so much, because these are, it captures the colors that we could see on the horizon during totality. Truly incredible uh, moment. And the reason why I really wanted to share that with you is because we're going to come to that. Oh, we're not there yet. No, we oh. have this first. <laughs> yes, well, because yeah. we have to talk about the other type of eclipse as yeah. well. Yes, we'll we'll come back to solar <laughs> eclipses at the end, but we're going to talk about lunar eclipses because, like I said, more people get to see lunar eclipses than solar eclipses when they happen, uh, and. We actually have two of them coming up this year. Um, the first one happens on May 26th. I, and remember what I said, there's always solar eclipses paired up with the lunar eclipse. Both of these, one happens, a lunar eclipse happens over Antarctica, the other happens over Africa. We don't get to see either of the solars associated with these. But here in Youngstown, the first one is just a month, two months away, uh, May 26th. This one is a total lunar eclipse. I want to go back that one slide. This is what the moon looks like when you have a lunar eclipse. Unlike the sun, the moon does not disappear. It turns blood red. And often when there's an eclipse, they call it a blood moon. The reason for this is the exact same thing that Tiffany was just talking about. She had twilight all around the horizon and it looked red. It's the exact same thing going on here that causes sun red sunsets. The uh, sun is behind the earth. The moon is in the earth's shadow, but the earth's atmosphere bends the sunlight as it's passing through. Red light bends a whole lot more than blue light because it's a longer wavelength. So the red light hits the moon, the blue light goes off in space and the moon will turn red uh, during a lunar eclipse. Um, it only does that when it gets very close to total. It still says it stays black and it looks like it's running through its phases when it's going through. But getting back to the one on May 26th, unfortunately here in Youngstown, we are not situated well. The area in dark here doesn't get to see any of the eclipse. The area in white gets to see all of the eclipse. We're in this gray area. This eclipse begins, uh, the first shadow of the earth touches the moon at 4.47 a.m. on May 26th. Uh, unfortunately, the sun comes up before we reach the total eclipse. That'll happen at 7.11 a.m. our time, and the sun will all be well up, and the sun will be below the horizon. You got to be out west if you want to watch the whole thing. It looks yeah, like so the, the, the moon Hawaii. will have set, right? So this, yes, the moon, it, uh, the when, moon you, when the moon is full, and uh, this can only happen at full moon, the moon is directly opposite the sun in the sky. It's the only time an eclipse can happen. So as the sun comes up, the moon sets. Yeah, you'll never um, see a lunar eclipse with a crescent moon or anything like that. It only happens during the full moon, and that's the full moon is in opposition to the sun. So uh, in the case of May 26th, the sun is going to be rising and the moon is going to be setting at the same time. Yes. And we won't be able to see it, unfortunately. But don't feel too bad because we have another chance on November 19th, you'll see over here. Uh, this one is considered a partial eclipse, but the moon is going to be 99% blocked by the Earth's shadow. So it's about as close to a total lunar eclipse as you can possibly get. This yeah. one's much better situated, but I encourage you to take a nap earlier. Uh, the first shadow of the Earth, and the other thing that's nice about lunar eclipses is they last a long time too. Uh, the first shadow of the Earth begins touching the moon at 2.18 a.m. So this is the night of the 18th into the morning of the 19th we're talking about. The maximum eclipse is reached at 4.02 a.m and the uh, moon leaves the Earth's shadow at 5.47 a.m. 
So uh, here in Youngstown, we do get to see the whole kit and caboodle on that one. Cool thing about lunar eclipses is you need no special equipment to watch them. Just go out and look up. You don't have to worry about special protection like you do with the solar eclipse. These just happen. And as a matter of fact, at my first planetarium I worked at in Charleston, West Virginia, the biggest star party I ever had was for a total lunar eclipse. Um, my, uh, I was, it was called Sunrise Museum. It was actually two historic mansions in a uh, residential neighborhood on top of a hill above downtown Charleston. And uh, the science hall was the lower building that had been a uh, governor's mansion. And there was this, we had this big field and uh, an oval parking lot around this big field. And then the art museum was above. Well, we got something like a thousand people into this residential neighborhood. The neighbors were screaming bloody murder because that. every street in this residential area was parked up and people were coming over there. The best view we had of the lunar eclipse though was when the TV people came out. They put their camera on it and zoomed in and put it on a monitor so everybody could watch it. And it was perfect that way. So uh, these are real fun to watch and a good way to get involved with astronomy. Yeah, if, and if you you don't have to have anything to see it, like Kurt said, but if you do have a pair of binoculars, even like cheap kid toy binoculars. Or even a department store yeah. telescope. It's about the only thing you can see through a cheap department store telescope yeah. is the moon. It's but... really cool. It, it creates yeah. really neat shadow effects with the with the craters and things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Absolutely. And one of the nice things about lunar eclipses is that 99% is... is pretty darn close to 100. When yeah. you're talking solar eclipses, the difference is night and day. Ha ha. Ah, ha ha. <laughs> okay, speaking of which, uh, for those of you who might not have seen uh, the 2017 eclipse. We have another one coming up on April 8th, 2024. Now I'm a little concerned because April 8th, uh, you've probably heard the weather forecast. We're getting kind of lucky this year. We're keeping our fingers crossed that in April, we're going to have clear skies for this. Uh, but this is the path of totality uh, that you see here. And look where it goes right across here, the path of totality. Let's we take a closer so look at that. Close. Here's Youngstown right here, that little dot. If you get as far away as Warren, you will be under the path of totality. So we you haven't made any walk from the planetarium to the path of totality, about, about three miles. Yeah, so we will not be having events at the university because of that, because there'll be 99% coverage in Youngstown. But as Tiffany said, there is a huge difference between 99% and 100%. The line is not good enough. You got to go to the 100. You got to. So, you can go to Gerard or Warren. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, We have not made plans for where we're going to be yet. We are going to be somewhere north and west of Youngstown to set up our observing for this particular Yeah, and event. actually, if you go west, like to Akron, you can notice that that's closer towards the center line. Uh, and that is usually you get longer periods of time where it, so the, the <laughs> eclipse is longer it lasts so yeah you, if you look at Lorraine and Illyria they're right there mm -hmm. um looks like it goes right by Lima the center line uh there, so, there are uh, websites out there that show you all like all the cities that are going to have the best look the best view the longest view yeah um, look at Buffalo up sure here have the best weather so that's one thing we're worried about is it's you know April brings showers so we're worried about clouds Yes, and we have this big beast right here, the Lake Erie cloud monster uh, mm -hmm. to worry about too. But look at this, it goes, the center line is right by Buffalo and Niagara Falls is right there. Oh my uh, God. I <laughs> hope somebody will get some good shots of that. That'll be awesome. So uh, that's coming up April 8th, 2024. We're already thinking ahead. We are not getting eclipse shades yet. We will plan ahead, but we are not getting eclipse they shades. They actually yet, technically so expire, call. I think every five years or so. Yes. Just so we could not use the ones from the 2017 eclipse mm -hmm. for this. Uh, not that we had many left over, but we could not use them uh, because of uh, the- uh, But yeah, uh, they, they uh, They're mylar, sure, so. Like, you know, make sure to get your eclipse glasses. And if you come to the planetarium for a free show and get a free pair of eclipse glasses, 
Keep don't toss them on the floor. You don't toss them on our floor, right? Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to stop our share there. And uh, let's see if what comments came up while we were going through there. Oh, well, somebody shared. That's nice. If anybody has any other lunar or solar eclipse yeah, comments, we'll be happy share to have your them. Stories, even, even if you're coming and watching us after the fact, we'd love to hear Absolutely. from you. And, and also, pictures, too. Put your pictures in the comments, too. We want to see your eclipse pictures. Yes, please. So that's another funny story about my in, uh, in Chile. I took the planetarium's camera equipment. We have some pretty sophisticated camera equipment. I took a lot of time to learn <laughs> how to use that camera equipment. I fashioned my own solar filter specifically for the camera so that I could like, I made it out of cardboard and tape and uh, so that we could take the picture of the sol total solar eclipse in Chile. And I was in such awe during totality, I forgot to take it off the lens. Because when you're in totality, you don't have to wear eclipse glasses. During totality, you can take off your glasses and look directly at the sun. It's the only time you can ever do that um, because the moon's covering the sun, so it's safe to see it. Um, and unfortunately, my all of my pictures of totality are black because they have that filter on. <laughs> but that's just how awesome I am. Totally not thinking. <laughs> So uh, yeah, if you were not as dumbstruck as I was and was able to uh, take some beautiful pictures of, of totality or, or any eclipse pictures, please share them with us. Um, we also, we want your input on what cosmic conversations we have next. So if there's any topics that you just want to um, nerd out with us about, you know, talking any, any astronomical, anything, a constellation, a star, uh, even features, black holes, whatever, we're, we're uh, down to have a conversation with you about it. So let us know in the comments. Uh, one other thing I want to point out too, um, our former planet, well, you, uh, those of you who get the Vindicator still might have seen about the passing of a uh, former planetarium pioneer at YSU, Ted Peters. Uh, we thank the Vindicator and Sean at the Vindicator for the great story they wrote about him. Uh, but one thing that was mentioned in there, and I should bring this up, one thing that Warren used to do, uh, he was a smart guy. Uh, when he was on vacation in the summer, he'd get hired on on cruise ships to do star talks. So he'd get free cruise rides so he could do star talks on ships. Boy, I'd like that gig. But one thing that was mentioned in there is one time in the mid 70s, he and Ted Peters both went on one and they actually do these and there probably will be, I don't know for this one, there might be some in the Pacific, I don't know in the Atlantic, yeah. uh, but cruise ships will sail under the totality and then yeah, ride the totality. I, I earlier that oftentimes these solar eclipses land over water. And so most people don't get to see them, but there are cruise ships that specifically go and hunt these eclipses and, and will, will drive to be underneath the path of totality. And then stay under it for longer than the time, and as they can long follow as they can. It. That's right. They, so they can actually be under it for four or five minutes or whatever, because they can, they can follow the yeah. moon. The, the great thing about that article that uh, Warren mentioned in the article about Ted Peters, and I, I, he's told me this story and I had forgotten about it completely. That trip when he it was off the coast of Africa, he was with Ted Peters and he got to introduce Ted Peters to Neil Armstrong, who was on the cruise ship. But uh, we, we at the planetarium think Warren Young is a rock star. So, <laughs> so. Yeah. That, that's one of my great uh, stories. Of, I, I wish uh, uh, we could get oh, Warren on here to talk about that. That but, uh, is yeah. my retirement plan. I don't know. About <laughs> yeah. that, but, uh, uh, the I Queen Elizabeth II used to have a small planetarium on it. So if you couldn't be outside, <laughs> you could do the planetarium inside. I'm like, that's my dream planetarium gig right there. Yeah, so, really cool. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm not seeing any more comments over here, but uh, we hope you guys enjoy learning about eclipses. And once again, uh, please share your eclipse stories and pictures with us and let us know what you'd like to see two weeks hence here on Cosmic Conversations. Oh, and see us this Saturday for our Keep Looking Up uh, here on Facebook Live. Um, yes, you get to hear Saturday, me talk a lot more. <laughs> April 3rd at uh, 8 p.m. We'll talk about... Uh, why Means we and nomenclature yeah. 
So why why stars are named what they are and, and things like that. So uh, in, interesting tidbits that we just don't get, have time to talk about in the planetarium. We'll get to to discuss that in depth on Saturday. So please join us. Thank All you. right. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon at the planetarium. We're working on it. <laughs> Bye for now.